Well, congratulations to you guys. And I hold no judgment ever toward anyone because I know what it's like to be an addict. I know what it's like to be an alcoholic. I know what it's like to be a smoker. I know what it's like to have issues with food. And so it's like, people are just so judgmental. Yeah, it is. It is hard not to self-medicate. It really is. When is my birthday? My birthday is November 10th. I am a Scorpio, even though I don't believe in astrology, but if I did, I'm a Scorpio. But I try to tell myself that like, I can do this because if I could get sober, then I can do this because getting sober was one of the hardest things that I ever did. It was very, very difficult. So yeah. So anyway, that's just kind of where I am at personally. And honestly, I feel bad even talking about it. I really do. Because I understand I'm thinking about um, I'm thinking about the people of Gaza all the time. I'm thinking about the people in Palestine all the time. And it really does make me feel bad when I get upset and I'm struggling with something like I was today, where I was feeling really down about smoking. And I was feeling really down about the fact that like, I've been on Chantix for four weeks now and, and there will still be time for it to work. But I was like getting down on myself like, oh, well, why was it working when I was out of state? Or I felt like it was starting to work when I was out of state, but it's not working now. And why did I feel like it was like helping out of state? And now I feel like I'm back to my old patterns now that I'm home. And I feel like now that I'm back in my comfort zone in my home, I'm getting back into those old smoking patterns even worse and just feeling really down. But then I feel guilty for feeling that way because I think, bitch, you're not going through shit. People in Gaza don't have food. People in Gaza don't have water. People in Gaza are getting bombed constantly. And you're upset that you're struggling with quitting smoking. Like, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, wait, did Trump get found guilty? Thank you guys for encouraging me. I appreciate you all so much. You're all so, like, great. I love you guys encouraging me. Wait a second. Did Trump get convicted? Thank you, Jones. Absalom Jones. Andrew, that's amazing. Congratulations on being clean. That's incredible. Jury is about to give a verdict. Oh, they haven't yet? Is there a way we can watch it live? Hold on, YouTube. Let's see if we can watch it live. What? Why am I not signed into you, YouTube, bitch? <laughs> like, what? Are, are you being for real right now, Google? Like, why do I have to do this? This is so stupid. What? Are you being for real right now? I don't want to do this way. Come on. Okay, so then let me go to YouTube. What? What the fuck is happening? All right, we're Trump trial live. Oh, shit. <gasps> he was convicted on all charges. LMAO. Oh, that's really funny. That's really funny. Oh my gosh, you guys, the copium though from the right wing. The copium from the right wing though. Yeah, they're just so crazy. It's going to be so much copium from the right wing. Because you know what they do and we all know that they do this. They, I'm going to mute this really quick. Or at least turn it down. I don't need it. Okay. But this is the thing with Trump supporters. Um, no man with. He can still run. But he was convicted. Um, here's the copium that's going to be with the right wing. Whenever they're mad that something doesn't go their way, they will say, oh, it was rigged. Oh, the judge was biased. Oh, the jury was biased. Oh, this and that. You guys remember how, and I know I don't talk about Trump that much because I've been mostly talking about foreign policy, but, and in Gaza, but I don't know if any of you guys saw this, but a bunch of his loser lackeys from Congress came up to go to the courthouse so they could kiss the ring. Like so embarrassing in the courthouse so that they could kiss the ring and go, Trump is not guilty. This Court is a sham. And what they were trying to do was the same people that say they care about the rule of law, those people, all those things, all those people that talk about claiming to care about the rule of law and all that shit, they don't care about the rule of law. They want to undermine it. They want to undermine it. 
None of those Republicans or none of the Trump supporters actually care about the rule of law. Remember that. Remember that. None of these conservatives, Trump, the supporters, the congressmen, none of them care about the rule of law. All they care about is getting their authoritarian dictator in office. That's all they care about. They don't know. They not only don't care about the rule of law, they don't care if the rule of law is diminished by their actions. They don't care about the rule of law or if it gets destroyed by their actions. All they care about is getting their dictator. A lot of people are asking if he can still run. He can. This does not preclude him from being able to run for office. Someone said, I can't find it now. Someone said, do you really have faith in our justice system? No, not necessarily, but not everything is that black and white. There are a bunch of people who, you know, get convicted wrongly and there's all kind of chicanery in the system, but there are some times where people get convicted and it's right. <laughs> like, it's not about Kool-Aid. It's about look at the facts. Like this guy is corrupt as fuck. You have to be in a cult not to understand how ridiculously over the top guilty he is. Trump supporters are like, you know what Trump supporters are like? They're like Zionists. Like it doesn't matter if you tell them, here's the truth and it's right in front of your face. They'll just go, don't believe your lying eyes. Fake news. It's like the same shit the Zionists do. Like Michael Cohen, Michael Cohen being a piece of shit doesn't mean that he is lying about being Trump's piece of shit. Let's not forget, you guys, that Michael Cohen did so much for him and was a part of the Trump cult. So, like, the idea that Michael Cohen would be an unreliable witness when he was, like, besties with him and running and carrying his water all the time is not really that shocking. Also, it's not going to matter. So if you're upset that Trump got convicted, it's really not going to matter. He's not going to go to jail. No, it's not what it means. And Michael Cohen is not the only person that testified. You're ignoring the testifi the testimony from like David Weisselberg and the other people that ran the, his creepy ass publication. He's still being a weasel. Justin, if you think that Michael Cohen is a dishonest weasel, maybe you should ask yourself why he worked for like the head dishonest weasel. <laughs> like, I just think it's funny that people are just so quick to believe Trump's lies. And you guys act like he's some victim of the system when he has every privilege in the world. In fact, you're right. Our judicial system is not fair because if it was fair, his ass would have been in jail. His ass would have been in jail. He should have been in jail awaiting trial. You think a not rich person wouldn't have been in jail awaiting trial? This clown has gotten so many privileges because of his wealth and his fame. He won't see a day in jail. He won't see a day in jail. Here's what's going to happen. He's going to appeal it. He will get to stay out of jail on appeal. And then he might win the election and he'll just throw it out. I mean, it's a state charge, so he may not be able to pardon himself from the state charge. But the idea, like it is laughable when people are like, Trump is treated so unfairly. This guy literally gets so many breaks and privileges because of who he is. You think if a regular person was sitting in a in a courtroom breaking their gag order over and over and over again that their ass wouldn't be in jail? Of course they would. But he didn't go to jail because he's Trump and he's privileged. Yeah, honestly, like the the gullible moments is just And by the way, for all the people that love to be like Trump is different, Trump is just Trump is a filthy Zionist. Trump is a pathetic Zionist that did exactly what Sheldon Adelson told him to do. Sheldon Adelson told him to move the embassy to Jerusalem. He did. Sheldon Adelson jumped. Trump said how high. He's a piece of shit Zionist too. It was a disgrace. This was a rigged trial by See, the it's the same shit over and over again. Uh, it's rigged. It's a disgrace. It's a it's rigged trial over and over disgrace. again. It wouldn't give us a venue change. We were at 5% or 6% in this district, in this area. Make up your mind, bro. This That's the other thing that they love to do to try to undermine the judicial system is they'll say, oh, well, it was in New York. That's unfair. But Playboy, you were just bragging about how you had all these fans in New York, right? He just had a rally in the Bronx where he was bragging about how he had all these fans in New York. The silent majority. 
So why does he assume that all of these New Yorkers are liberals? Like the the endless, the endless victim complex is just so amazing. And it's the same shit over and over again. It's rigged. It's this. It's it's like, I'm sorry, I'm going to need anybody who wants to defend Trump. Miss me with the he's a victim. Literally, this that energy is the same shit the Zionists do. Try to make themselves victims. You're not a victim, boo. Like, it's amazing. Disgraceful trial. The real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here and everybody knows what happened here. He, I love how he the always says everybody back, knows. DA, people are saying, everyone knows. I'm a very innocent man. It's okay. I'm fighting for our country. I'm fighting for our constitution. Our whole country is being rigged right now. This was done by the Biden administration in order to wound or hurt an opponent. A police. No, this is another perfect example of when they say, oh, no, this is Biden coming after him. No, you know what the problem was? That the DOJ didn't go after him sooner. That, again, was the privilege that comes to be that comes when being Trump. His ass should have been indicted right after January 6th. Right after he should have been indicted. The problem was not that they indicted him. The problem was that they waited two years to do it. That's why. And they did because the Democrats are losers and cowards. And they were afraid of getting political blowback. They were afraid of holding him accountable and indicting him because they were afraid of his rabid, psychotic base. That is the only thing. That is the only reason. Yeah, exactly this stuff. Everybody likes to forget when they're trying to simp for Trump that his psychotic Zionist son-in-law who said that he would love to steal property in Gaza and turn it into beachfront properties did everything that Israel wanted him to do and then made a deal with the Saudis as soon as he left office. But Trump supporters don't like to talk about that. That's inconvenient. They love to talk about Hunter Biden's penis and you know, Ukraine corruption with Biden. But the second you want to talk about Jared Kushner in Saudi Arabia, all of a sudden they are no longer interested in underlying corruption. Like, please. I I'm so tired of, like genuinely, like a lot of my energy is going to Israel right now, but like I'm genuinely, one of the reasons why I don't talk about Trump as much is because I'm so tired of the Trump Sims. The same old, it's the same old, same old. They don't care about facts. They don't care about principles. They don't care about the truth. They just repeat the same regurgitated talking points over and over again. And honestly, it's tired. I'm over it. He's not ever going to go to jail anyway. Political opponent. And I think it's a, just a disgrace. Mm -hmm. and we'll it's keep fighting until the end and we'll win. Because our country's gone to hell. We don't have the same country anymore. We have a divided mess. We're a nation in the... Yes, bitch, we are a nation in decline. And one of the reasons why our country has gone to hell and in decline is because of motherfuckers like you, okay? That's one of the reasons. He doesn't care. He doesn't care that our country is corrupt. He just wants the corruption to be on his side. Yeah, our country is corrupt. And our country is falling apart. But they don't care about that. He doesn't care about that. He wants the Supreme Court to be corrupt. He just wants it to be corrupt in his favor. He wants our campaign finance laws to be corrupt. He just wants them to be corrupt in his favor. They don't care about the corruption at all. That's why, if you'll all remember, the only thing he did while he was in office legislatively was passing tax cuts for the rich and corporations. That's the only thing he did. Yeah, you're right, 1H Blues. Netanyahu used to sleep in Jared Kushner's childhood bedroom. Okay. Decline, serious decline. Millions and millions of people pouring into our country right now. What does that have to do with anything? From mental institutions, terrorists. Again, more fear mongering about illegal immigration. Like it's also so fucking tired. Like I am not worried about some person coming in from Venezuela because they're desperately trying to get a job somewhere. Like, no, you know what I'm worried about? I'm worried about billionaires. I'm worried about Zionists. I'm worried about them stealing our elections. I'm worried about them affecting our Supreme Court, which they do. Our Supreme You want to talk about illegitimate institutions? You want to talk about illegitimate institutions? The Supreme Court has thoroughly made itself 
an illegitimate institution. I'm worried about billionaires and private equity firms buying up all the houses so any of us who ever wanted to buy a house will never get to have one. I'm worried about them criminalizing homelessness so they can make us all permanent renters. But no, 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 no. We're supposed to be uh, concerned about supposed terrorists coming in from the southern border. Like, be so fucking for real. Taking over our country. We have a country that's in big trouble. Yeah, me too. There are trillions and trillions. I love you too, reactionary. With a conflicted judge who should have never been allowed to try this case, never. I hope the judge sues him for, for like, defamation. This is long from over. Thank you very much. Why don't you go for it and make it tell him? Ah! You know what you want to rule That's really funny. Whoever shouted that question, whoever shouted that question, that was a, just a funny troll because they're like... Why should voters vote for a criminal? Excuse me, sir. Why should voters vote for a criminal with fake hair? That's amazing. No, I guess that's it. It's also like they pretend to care about the rule of law, but then they're undermining the jurors. Like, like they won't undermine the Supreme Court. They like the Supreme Court because there's a bunch of psychotic right-wing zealots on the Supreme Court. Like Alito. Did you guys hear about that? Alito having the upside down flag in his yard like a lunatic. And then when he got caught, he blamed his wife. He threw his wife under the bus. Yeah, right, Crimson. Biden's like, and also like people don't understand that like two things can be true at once. Like this doesn't mean that Biden isn't trash. Like we know Biden is trash, but let's not pretend that just because Biden is trash, that Trump isn't a criminal. Like, yeah, I did reactionary him getting booed at the Libertarian Convention. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, the old Ted Cruz defense. Oh, you guys, speaking of which, I don't know if there is somebody in Congress that I hate as much as I hate Ted Cruz. Like, I just hate how smarmy Ted Cruz is and how fake he is and how, like, he pretends to do, like, the working class shtick. It's like, ah, and he, like, doesn't even work. He's like a full-time podcaster that sometimes goes to the Senate. <laughs> the stuff, have I decided who I'm voting for? Um, No, I have not. I don't know. Because if I'm, like really being genuinely like the way that I struggle and I'm really struggling with it. It is fear of the basically what kind of harm I'm going to cause with my vote. Because I know that Biden is garbage and he has shown that he is totally behind the genocide in Gaza. But I also know that Trump is a trash Zionist too. And that he recently said in an article that he was interviewed in that he would deport Muslims, he would deport Palestinian activists, and that he was going to set the movement back by 30 years. Um, Trump is a demon and a Zionist and will be brutal to the Palestinians. But it's like, it's like pick your war criminal. Like, so we can either pick Biden, who's a war criminal who's done nothing but prop up and fund this genocide and cheerlead it, or we get Trump, who's also a war criminal and a Zionist, and will prop up this genocide and cheer it on. And the reason why I feel, the reason why I feel conflicted about it is because I am so angry about the way that Biden has handled this, that I want to punish him Oh, you're right, Skibby. It was at a fundraiser for primary, primarily Jewish rich donors. It is. So there's a part of me that like, I want to punish Biden. I want Biden to lose because I want him to suffer consequences for his actions, for the fact that he has been brutal to the Palestinians and for the fact that he has not listened to us. We have been screaming. We have been protesting. We have been boycotting. He knows exactly how the public feels. He doesn't care. So I feel like he should be punished for that. At the very same time, I struggle because I don't want to hurt other people in this country. And I know that there are people that get mad about that, but I'm not going to lie and act like I'm not struggling with it because I don't want to hurt people in this country. I don't want to hurt black people and people of color and queer people and trans people and women and people who can get pregnant. 
because I know that these vicious fascists, that is what they are. They are vicious fascists. I know what they want to do when they get back in power, if Trump wins. And they are really going to hurt not only all the groups that I just mentioned, they're going to hurt a ton of workers, a ton of workers, because there has been a resurgence of unions in this country. Trump was insanely anti-union, insanely anti-worker. You know you hear all his bullshit like, oh, I'm pro-work and blah, 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 my hard hat. But his NLRB was garbage and he attacked workers. So it's me, Panther. Biden doesn't care about any of those groups of people. Yeah, you're right. I don't think he does either. But if you look at what Trump and the Republican Party want to do, they want to actively make shit worse. They want to actively make life more unbearable for queer people. They want to actively make life more unbearable for working class people and poor people. Trump promised he was going to cut more taxes for the rich. He promised they were going to cut more regulations to poison our planet and our water. They want to make life more unbearable for people who can get pregnant by passing draconian abortion laws. So it's it's very stressful because also we don't even live in a democracy. Because if we were in a democracy, why are these our choices? Like, I feel like our democracy is already gone. Because if we really lived in a democracy, then why are these our only choices? Why am I being forced to choose between these two monsters? I'm not, JR, I'm actually not in a swing state. So it kind of, it kind of is irrelevant, honestly, for me, because my state's going to vote for Biden regardless. I live in New York. So New York is a blue state. They're going to go blue. But, you know, I still believe in voting. I still think voting is important, especially on the local level, especially on the local level for our Congress people. Like those things are very important. When it comes to president, I think that, you know, I still believe in voting, but honestly, like, yeah, my vote is not going to have as big of an impact as somebody who's living in Michigan. Because for those of you who don't live in the United States, I, uh, Skippy, I voted for Jill Stein in 2016 too, uh, and got raped over the coals for it by psychotic, like Hillary Clinton supporters. Um, but the thing is, is that when it comes to, and, and another right wing, um, you know, Trump administration would be more right-wing judges on the Supreme Court. So it's, you know, on the one hand, I feel like I do want to say fuck you to Joe Biden and vote against him because I also know that, you know, I am fully aware of the fact that our country is incredibly corrupt. Like they all, to some degree, work for the same team. It's just a matter of how much worse are they? Like, that's kind of how I feel about it. Like, they're all plutocrats. They're all oligarchs. They're all simps to corporations in the 1%. They all want to give tax cuts to the rich. They all want to screw workers. They all want to make sure we can't buy a house. It's a matter of degrees of like, okay, would this harm other people in our own country even more? Than what and then how Biden is hurting them now, which again is a very stressful thing to think because it's like you're screwed no matter what. Your options are shitty no matter what. Oh, so I can either vote for Trump, who is an actual open fascist who wants to turn this country into a full on fascist state, or I can vote for Biden, who pays lip service to like marginalized communities, but like is funding and propping up the genocide in Gaza. How is that a choice? How is that a choice? Oh, reactionary. Thank you. It just, it's just really stressful because I fear hurting people, you know? And like I said, I feel that rage. I can't stand Biden. I want Biden to lose. I want him to pay for what he's done. And then on the other hand, I think about what Trump would do in regards to Gaza. And I don't say that in like a fear mongering way, like, oh, well, Trump would be worse. Cause like, how could it get worse than it is now? But I also, so it's not to like be like fear mongering. It's just to look at the reality of the situation and look at what Trump's policies were toward Israel when he was in office and his psychotic son-in-law. And then the way that they would also affect domestic policy scares me. But it also makes me angry because it makes me think like, why am I in this position? Why? 
Why are my only choices a genocidal piece of shit old man who's on the verge of death, who doesn't care what we have to say, it doesn't listen to our protest or the actual fascists? Like, why are those the choices? You call this a democracy? Like, please. So, you know, honestly, like my honest answer is I vacillate. Like I go back and forth. Like, that's how I feel. Like when it comes to like voting on the presidential level in November, I vacillate between depending on the day and what I see. So like I'll see a story about how the right wing in Kentucky is elite, is making homelessness illegal, are going to arrest people and make them do forced slave labor in prisons. And they want to bring that to the national stage. I see a story like that and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can't vote. I have to make sure Trump doesn't win. I should vote for Biden to at least just prevent that, to lessen that harm. And then I open my phone and I go on Twitter and I see a picture of a blown up Palestinian baby, baby's head. And I think, fuck Joe Biden. Fuck Joe Biden. He needs to lose. Like, so I go back and forth, you know, but it's hard to like discuss this in any nuanced way because like, you know, a lot of people get really, really mad about it on either side, you know, like, which I understand. Um, actionary, there's a Grace Blakely. I know she's always stealing my, my, my thunder in the Google searches. Um, but it's hard to talk about because people feel very passionately one way or another. And there's no way that you can try to talk about this and just be honest about your feelings without people like attacking you or getting really mad, which again, I understand the anger. I do. Like, it's a very emotional, serious topic. But for that reason, it makes it difficult to talk about because you're going to polarize people no matter what you say. That's true, Jazz. Yeah, and sometimes, like, uh, that's why I said I vacillate. Sometimes I have days where I'm like, fuck it. Let it burn. Let it burn. This country is a joke. Like, it's bullshit. The whole thing is a scam. It's an oligarchy. We don't live in a representative democracy. We don't live in a democratic state. The income inequality in this country is out of fucking control. Our politicians don't listen to us. They're all bought, paid for, and bribed by corporations in the billionaire class and the Zionist lobby. Our Supreme Court is a joke. So let it burn. If anything, we should just take the mask off. Like, let, let, let the mask come off so that we stop pretending that we live in this democracy. And I feel that way often. But then, like I said, I'll see stories where a little girl was forced against her will to carry a pregnancy to term or the story about the homelessness or stories about how they want to implement Project 2025 to make people who are poor in this country's life even more miserable. And then I think, oh, my gosh, like we have to do everything we can to try to slow that down. But it's like a back and forth, you know, it's, it keeps me up at night. Yeah. But I hear you. I don't get mad at people. Oh, thanks, Mo Sand. People get super chats going for Blakely. My payment is still being verified. I appreciate you. <sighs> no, I know me, Panther. I really, I hear you. I hear you. Like, I'm not, I hear you. They didn't. They don't care. They all hate us. Like, they literally hate us. They don't care about what we say. They don't care about what we think. And I totally hear your perspective and I feel your perspective much of the time. I'm just telling you why, for me, it has been a struggle. If I do vote third party, I would vote for Jill Stein again. But I do not envy people living in swing states. I am glad, going back to the Trump thing, that he got convicted, though, because even though we know that because he's rich, he's not going to see the a day of the inside of a jail cell. I still think it's good that he was convicted because he's a criminal. So like, you know, I'm tired of uh, people in this country who are rich getting away with shit. It's so tired. They've made it, they've made it um, for, um, they've made it, our Supreme Court and our government is so corrupt that they've made it even harder and harder and harder to get charged with corruption. That's why you don't really see rich people ever going to jail because they've loosened the law so much so to where it's really hard to get caught in corruption. Like they make it so that you almost have to have a, hello, sir, here is a bag of money with a dollar sign on it for a quid pro quo. Like, it's ridiculous, like, the way they've loosened laws around corruption in this country. And the reason why they do that is because they don't want the rich getting held accountable. They don't like seeing rich people go to jail. 
they they don't want to see rich people go to jail. So what do you do if you're really, really rich and powerful and you don't want to see rich people go to jail? What do you do? You change the laws. What do you do? You change the laws. So they have changed the laws as such to where it is now very difficult for a rich person to even see a conviction. So I'm happy that he at least got convicted and he deserved it. It's not, I'm glad he got convicted because I hate Trump. It's, no, I'm glad I, he got convicted because he's a fucking criminal and criminals should be convicted. They should be held accountable. They shouldn't get away with shit just because they're rich. Yeah, that's for sure. That's for sure. <sighs> it's pretty funny that he got convicted though. Oh, hold on one sec. My dog's crying. This is like my 20th cup of coffee today. It's like my 20th cup. I've been trying to make uh, espresso. Um, my espresso machine is not that great though, but I've had a lot. All right. Let me catch up on some comments. Hey, Mohammed. So we should just like Katniss Everdeen at all. <laughs> I'm trying to tap the screen and nothing happens. Oh yeah. My, um, oh, Hey, Elias. What happened with Robert De Niro? Oh, I could look at that. Yeah. The other thing I was going to say though, oh my gosh, my hair though. My hair is really, really, really getting on my nerves, but I haven't been able to afford to get a haircut yet. So I haven't gotten a haircut because I don't have the money to get the haircut. But so now my hair keeps falling like that. And it's like really annoying. Uh, yeah, he's Sean, but Coke has caffeine in it too. Yeah. Yes. I feel like, honestly, I just feel like I have to accept that part because like this is part of like me being an addict, I feel like. Like, I always overdo things that I love. You know what I mean? Like, I'm the same way when it comes to cigarettes and alcohol and candy. Oh, somebody wrote him. Is that your hubby? Yeah, that was my husband. He, like, came in to, like, get his um his phone. I usually ask him to stay out. Um, I used to be addicted to Mountain Dew, guys. Like, it was bad. I was addicted to Mountain Dew. I tried e-cigs, but I don't know. It just didn't give me the same thrill I, I don't know it just i don't know it didn't have the same effect okay what was the other clip that you guys wanted to watch uh yeah muhammad mountain dew is really bad for your teeth in fact i lost two by the time i was 19 from drinking mountain dew one actually cr cracked in my mouth and fell apart that's actually how i started drinking um uh coffee was because i needed something that had caffeine that um wasn't going to destroy my teeth in the same way that Mountain Dew was. Oh yeah, you guys want to watch the um uh the Robert De Niro thing. I honestly I haven't even seen the Robert De Niro thing, so I'm watching it for the first time with you guys. This is my neighborhood, downtown New York City. Is this it? I grew up here and feel at home in these streets. I feel comfortable. Is this it, guys? The clip? The twin towers fell just over here. Just over there, this part of the city was like a ghost town. But we vowed we would not allow terrorists to okay. change our way of life. And we started the Tribeca Festival to bring people back. I love this city. I love this city. I don't want to destroy it. Donald Trump wants to destroy not only the city, but the country. And eventually he can destroy the world. Okay, what I do like about it, though, is that you can hear people saying fuck Joe Biden in the background, like Palestinian protesters. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. But I feel Robert De Niro there because I love New York. I love New York. Jazz, I hear you. He lives in he lives in fucking gentrified Tribeca. Yeah, I, I get that. And I see what you're saying. But New York is a beautiful city. It's an amazing city. There's so many different parts to New York, and I love it. We would not allow terrorists. To, I owe the city a lot. And that's why it's so weird that Donald Trump is just across the street. Because he doesn't belong in my city. I don't know where he belongs, but he surely doesn't belong here. We New Yorkers used to tolerate him when he was just another grubby real estate hustler masquerading as a big shot. A two-bit playboy lying his way into the tabloids pretending to be a spokesman, a spokesperson for himself. He was calling it as himself for himself to fool the press into inflating his net worth, a clown. But this city is pretty is a clown. We make room for clowns. We have- Oh, well, thank you, O'Day. Crazy things in the street. 
we tolerate it as part of thank you as part of the culture but not a person like trump who will eventually run the country that does not work and we all know that anyway we make room for clowns to each his own but no one takes him or took him really seriously they take him seriously now of course but around the country i just like that you could hear all the protesters in the background we did started to support him they bought into his bullshit Trump bought their votes with outrageous lies and empty promises. He got the most religious evangelicals to applaud. The thing is, too, about this. Who bragged about sexual assault. And just a couple I'm going to speed it up because he's talking too slow. But the thing that the coldest cold read ever. Yeah, the thing about it is it's like right message, wrong messenger. Like, apparently, this is what I heard. I don't know if this is true. One of you guys can fact check it for me. But apparently... The Biden administration wanted Robert De Niro to go out and do this, which is so embarrassing and tone deaf because he's not the right messenger for this. They need to get somebody else because he's too like, um, oh, sorry, O'Day, please give us like a two day notice before the live. Honestly, I usually want to, but the reason why I didn't today is because I actually wasn't planning on doing one today. I was telling everybody else in the live earlier that like, I really wasn't feeling well. I wasn't planning on doing it, but then I was like, uh, I actually have time today and I, I miss everyone and I haven't done one in a while. So I just kind of jumped on, you know, like kind of last minute. Um, thank you, Patricia for the super chat. I appreciate you. Um, but anyway, like he's not the right messenger for this because he is a rich out of touch celebrity. So it's not that De Niro is saying anything that is necessarily wrong here. Like he's right about everything he's saying about Trump. But why did the Biden administration is out of touch as they are? Like you guys are so out of touch. Why did you think that bringing out this like out of touch rich person was going to help anything? Like what? It just shows how insanely out of touch they are. You know what I mean? Oh, thank you, Absalom, for the super sticker couple of blocks from here, a jury found him liable for sexual abuse. Somehow, he even got self-styled patriots to support a man who called for terminating the Constitution and on January 6th rallied an angry mob to threaten democracy, leaving death and destruction. I hear you, Mohammed, but he's... That's why I needed to... I hear you about Robert De Niro being a familiar face or whatever. Uh, I totally get that. But the problem is, is he's too, he's too famous. Like there isn't anybody that doesn't know who Robert De Niro is. He's been a famous actor for the better part of like six decades. So like, it just feels out of touch. Like, couldn't you find some like kind of famous person that isn't like as rich or as well known to, to deliver this speech? shame crimson peaks wrote shameful day in american history i know mike johnson is such a cock he's such a cock get out of here it's a trap are you blind okay that is a good quote but yeah so uh i'm gonna speed this up just slightly be involved and wanted to be involved in the new biden harris ad because it shows the violence of trump and reminds us that he'll use violence against anyone who stands in the way of his megalomania and grief but it's a coward's violence. You think Trump ever threw a punch himself or took one? This yeah, guy exactly. ran and hit in the White House. Bunker he and like and and Austin would have been better. No way. He doesn't get blood on his hands. No, he doesn't. He directs the mob to do his dirty work for him by making a suggestion, an inference. Yeah, somebody else. And, and Robert De Niro would know about mobs, okay? He has played many mobsters in his day. Also, somebody just mentioned the comment again about... Uh, <clears throat> um. Ember Long said that the conspiracy has been debunked. No, it hasn't. I, I don't know what that person's talking about, but January 6th actually happened. Like, I watched it live. <laughs> it, it actually happened. In fact, people got convicted for it, but um, none of the people behind it did. That's what people actually really miss about January 6th, was that January 6th was just the buffoons running to protest. And to break shit. But they didn't get the people behind it. The people behind it, like Trump, like Peter and Navarro, the people who actually planned it, they didn't get. They didn't prosecute. 
They just prosecuted the chumps that carried it out for them. Yeah, exactly, JT. Only the poor has gotten trouble. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, if I were to vote for third party, I definitely would not vote for Marianne Williamson because Marianne Williamson is like a Loki Zionist. Like, I wouldn't, and she's been very cagey on Gaza. Like, she's been kind of like, oh, well, you know, Israel's a right to defend itself and la, 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 la. It's like, you need someone who's actually going to be, like, strong. Hey, you did really well on Fran's pod. Oh, um, response both cut the dinner. Thank you, Maeve. I appreciate you saying that about Francesca's podcast because I was totally unprepared for it. I didn't really know until like five minutes before, like what we were going to be talking about or what the discussion was about. And I didn't know we were going to play a game. And that was all my fault because Francesca's team sent me an email with all the information that we, we, we would be covering before the show, but I didn't read it or see it because I didn't think to check for an email. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to go on. Like, I don't, because I'm broke, I don't even have any of the things that people have for their podcast. So when I went on her podcast, she was like, oh, what mic are you going to use? And, and do you have headphones? And I was like, no, I don't have headphones. I don't have a professional mic. I literally just talk into my MacBook. So I was like, no. And I was totally unprepared for it. So I'm glad that you enjoyed it because I was worried that I did like a disservice by not doing more research or, or prepping for it. But like I said, I didn't know that I was like g supposed to prep for it. Yeah, the stuff at the risk of sounding too life story. When I say I'm literally broke, like I do mean that. And by that, I mean, I don't have money for anything extra. All of my money goes to bills and I am in a lot of debt. I'm in a lot of debt because what happened was we were having a ton of financial problems in the last year. And so as a result of that, we were using credit cards to live and pay our bills. So we got into a credit card debt. And like, like, thankfully, I'm not unhoused. Like I, you know, my husband and I pay our bills, but like, we never have money for anything extra because we're in so much debt that once we pay our bills, we immediately have to spend money on paying off debt. It sucks. <laughs> I know I'm not alone, though. A lot of Americans are in debt. And this gang robbles and follows this obvious order. It's no surprise that the murder rate and other violent crimes peaked under Trump and are falling under Biden. And now he's promising to use our own military to attack U.S. citizens. That's the tyrant he's telling us to do. And believe me, he means it. When Trump ran in two yeah, exactly. Like trying, they want to run. running for president. No, never could happen. We've forgotten the lessons of history that showed us other clowns who weren't taken seriously until they oh, became sorry for my slur With Trump, but like to speak to that, like I know that I'm not alone in that. Like. You know, like I know that a lot of people, it actually is really good. It's very good. Um, I know that I'm not alone in that with being broke and, and having a lot of debt. I think that a lot of people think like, oh, if you have an apartment that you're paying, that you're living in, or you have a cell phone, it means you're not broke. Like, well, no, like I've had my cell phone for a while and I try to do my best with my husband to, to pay our rent and stuff. But when you're living in this economy where I believe that like the powers that be are trying to ruin our lives and trying to make us broke because they want us to be cogs in a machine for their shitty jobs, it makes it really, really hard. And the more you're in debt, I'm sure anybody who's been in debt has to, I'm sure understands this. The more you're in debt, the harder it is to get out. Because it's like, if I make a payment on my credit card for the month, I'm only paying a little bit of the principal because they charge me money for having debt. Like you get charged for having debt. And then like, you know, just stupid things like that. Like my electricity bill was $400 last month. Like that's insane. It's a joke. I don't use that much electricity. It's only me and my husband and our dogs. Like, and of course I have dogs. So it's like dogs are really expensive when you live in the city. Um, You know, it's just a lot. So it's like, I'm not so like destitute to the point where like I used to be, I used to be unhoused. Um, so it's not like that. And I'm grateful for that. But it's like, it's very, very hard, like to try to get anything that is not when you are under this much debt, and you don't have the money. Like, so for me, like, I don't get a haircut, even though I need a haircut, I would like to get a haircut, but I don't get one. Because to me, that is a expense that is just not a priority when 
I know my phone bill is coming up and I know my internet bill is coming up and our rent is really, really high because I live in Brooklyn. I live in New York City. So our rent is really high, although rent's getting higher all across the country. So it's like not even just New York anymore. It's like so much of the, the country. And, um, and so my rent's really high. So it's like, I'm not going to spend money on like getting a haircut when, you know, I have all these bills and all this, this debt, you know? So it's just hard. It's just annoying. And it's like, I feel like the powers that be like, want us to stay down because if they can keep us poor and desperate, then we never will like do anything we want. You know, like they want us to be cogs in the machine of their shitty businesses. You know what I mean? Like, they want us to continue to sell for them. They want us to work for Amazon. They want us to like work for all these places. They don't want us having a creative outlet. They don't want us making content and talking about the news. They don't want us doing anything like that. Yeah, exactly. They're, they want us to be serfs. That is what they want from us. They want us. Um, yeah, Maeve, I hear you with the dogs. That That's what they want us to be. And we don't have health care, but Israel does, okay? We can't buy a house, but all the Israelis get to just go steal houses from Palestinians in the occupied West Bank. Like, literally, that's what this is. So that's why it was, like, hard for me and kind of scary to, like, start doing this whole content creation thing and, and kind of jumping into it full time because... That's not a, a easy thing to do when you don't have a lot of money. Like it's kind of scary, you know, because it's it's very inconsistent income, and it's you're kind of just like you don't really know what you're getting into. But at the same time, like, um, I kept getting fired from my jobs anyway, so I kept ending up unemployed, and I was like, well, I may as well try to become a full time content creator because um, I. I keep losing my jobs anyway. So people obviously don't want to hire me. Oh, you're right. The stuff we need to get you advertiser sponsors. Yes. I would love to do. I would be totally happy with doing advertising and sponsoring. If it was a brand that I actually liked, like if it's a brand that's actually good, then like, and, and, and ethical, then I would be like totally cool to promote it or something I actually use, you know? Um, no, for me, Maeve, like one of the reasons why I had a hard time, like keeping a job a lot was because of the fact that, um, I have a lot of mental health issues. <laughs> yes. Coffee. I would do coffee ads, bro. Cause I genuinely love coffee, like love coffee. So like, I would do that. Um, oh yeah. I used to get therapy through bitter help a couple of years ago. It's such a scam. I don't want to discourage anybody from getting, you know, therapy. Therapy is wonderful, but I did not have a good experience with better help. Yeah. You're right. Muhammad Mountain Dew should sponsor me. I gave so much of my life to Mountain Dew, so many years to Mountain Dew, okay? You know the other reason, guys, why I say, too, that I need to get, like, a lot more, like, I would like to have a little bit more inculcation as far as, like, not just finances, but, like, subscribers to help kind of insulate me is because then I can do more of what I, I want without fear of, you know, TikTok taking my videos down or something, you know? It's because... If you have more uh, followers or subscribers or you have more independence where your subscribers and people like sponsors that are willing to stand behind you will stand behind you, your subscribers stand behind you, your patrons stand behind you, the brands that you do end up working with stand behind you, it's a lot easier to be able to do what you want. Because I think I told you guys this, that like every single time I post a parody video making fun of Zionists, they take it down. Like I've had my shit demonetized, even community guidelines strikes on TikTok and shit like that. And I feel like it's better to be, it's easier to do those things if you have a little bit of insulation because you have a community, whether it's sponsors or whether it's your own subscribers or patrons that are kind of cushioning you from them full on attacking you. So that's what I hope to do. Cause I made, you know, a lot of comments uh, or a lot of content uh, parody videos, but it's discouraging when every time I make a parody video and I put it on TikTok, they fucking take it down. Like, it's just so annoying. Um, oh, thank you, Crimson Peak. Oh, that's really sweet. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, unfortunately music doesn't pay anything. In fact, being a musician costs money. <laughs>
<laughs> like it literally costs money. <laughs> it does not pay you anything. Um, but again, that to me goes back to the point of like our capitalist system that they don't want art. They don't want artists. Like the artists that get really famous are people that can make a lot of money for capitalism. And when it comes to just like, I want to be an artist or somebody who wants to make clay or, you know, whatever, write music. They don't want us. Like they don't want us a part of society. <clears throat> Yeah, I think I will eventually put my podcast or whatever I'm doing here. I don't know if you call it a podcast or just like a YouTube video on Rumble. I just haven't had the emotional uh, bandwidth to do it right now because I'm already posting on so many platforms. And as I told you guys before, because of the fact that I don't have a lot of money, I do all of this myself. So like all the content that I post and I post every single day with the exception of not being on vacation or whatever, when I went to go see my sister... I post across platforms and I do like all the editing and the SEO and everything I do myself. So it's like, it's very taxing. <laughs> and so I would eventually like to get on Rumble too. I just haven't, I just haven't yet, but I, I will eventually. Um, you know what I would really love? I also want to do more promotion of Palestinian brands. I want to do more Palestinian and Arab brands. I would love to get like an Arab sponsor, like an Arab company an Arab or a Palestinian company to sponsor. I would love that because I've bought a lot of Palestinian created things on already. We're behind your back till death. Anyone supports our Palestinian calm more than one of us. Oh, that's really sweet. Oh day. Thank you. And thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Oh, bony bird. Getting guest spots is going to be a lot for sub counts. I bet probably it is not easy though, to get guests when you are as small right now as I am. So, uh, what are the brands I got? Oh, one of them was one called Sima Ahawa. It's a very tiny brand Palestinian company that I bought the anti-Zionist club shirt from, which I love. I love that sweater. Okay. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot we were watching the Robert De Niro thing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, you want other shows? Oh, yeah, 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 Maeve. Yeah, you're right. And I have been on other podcasts. I'm still waiting for TYT to invite me on. Okay. Can you guys believe that? TYT has still not invited me on their show. Where is Jank? Still not invited me on the show. Um, ooh, Middle Eastern coffee roasters. Actually, Arabic coffee is like some of my favorite coffee, actually. Another show that I would love to go on would be like what's his name? I totally just like blinked his name, but I forgot that, uh, jazz said the young Turks suck. Well, I don't think so. I like the young Turks. Um, but you know, everybody, everybody has their, um, their opinion, which is fine. Why is my forehead red just from like scratching it barely? Um, everybody has their, yeah, I would go on Jimmy Dore if he invited me on. Everybody has their their thing. I'd go on Lex Friedman. Not that Lex Friedman would have a reason to invite me on. Yes, I wish I could go on Pierce Morgan. I would love to go on Pierce Morgan. Oh, I would love that so much. I would love that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would go on all of them. I would go on all of them. I hate when people like gatekeep shit and are like, you can't go on this podcast or you shouldn't go on this or you should boycott. It's like, no, 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 no. That's not me. I would love to go on any of them. You know who I would love to interview just for like shits and giggles to see like what he would say um, is I would love to talk to uh, what's his bucket. What is the guy's name? Why am I not remembering anything? Yes. What I want to do. I think I told you guys this. Um, I want to go on Pierce Morgan show and uh, wear the, but do you condemn Hamas shirt? That's what I want. I want to, I want to wear the, but do you condemn Hamas? <laughs> uh, yes, I saw that Ember Long that he uh, did uh, a video of mine or he covered like one of my Rappaport videos, which I didn't even know because he didn't tag me like in the video or anything or even mention my name. I found out because someone on Instagram told me, would I debate the son of Hamas? Yes. I would love to. That guy is literally a Mossad agent. I would love to debate him. Also, he was such a clown. 
like Abby Martin is so respectable and like was very calm and level headed. I probably would not have been that calm and level headed. I would have probably started screaming back at him. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes, I would love to. Um, I tried to find your links in his summary. Yeah, he didn't he didn't tag me in it or anything, which was a bummer. Um, first of all, we should be blocking all celebrities. Okay. No, I want Pierce Morgan to invite me on a show and I want to be wearing the but do you condemn Hamas shirt? And then if he says anything, I'm gonna be like, yeah, but but do you, but do you condemn Hamas? <laughs> uh Pierce show made a member of the crew remove a Palestinian flag shirt. <gasps> Okay, so then you know what I would do? Uh, not that he would invite me on anyway, but I would wear the shirt under my shirt and then I would take the shirt off and do like a reveal. You know what's stupid about Piers Morgan not having me on and not inviting me on? He invited the crackhead Barney person on. That was so stupid. It wasn't even an entertaining segment. And who is that person? But he had her on, but he didn't invite me on. Oh, I would love to uh, debate the uh, Mossad son of Hamas guy. Yeah. So, so literally, first of all, any celebrity you should block, definitely. But there are some that are particularly egregious that, that should definitely be blocked, like, out the gate. Like, anyone who hasn't spoken out about Palestine should be blocked immediately, if not sooner. Same with influencers and not buying their shit. Not buying their shit. Review Abu Odea. What is that? Would I debate Rabbi Shmuley? Thank you, Oday. Um, yeah. Yeah, that would be fun. He's a creep. I would love to. I would love to debate Michael Rappaport, but Michael Rappaport is too much of a weenie to face me. It was Michael Rappaport that went on TikTok and started reporting a bunch of my videos. Like a creep that he is, he was screen recording my TikTok from like a year ago and then posting it on Twitter. And then um, he was like reporting all my videos of him where I'm making fun of him. He's a coward. He loves to pretend he's so like badass New Yorker. Like, yeah, that's right. I'm Michael Rappaport, big dick, Donald Trump, blah, blah. like he pretends, fuck you, fuck you, and fucking, like, he tries to, like, act like he's all badass like that, but he's such a weenie, he wouldn't debate me, yeah, totally unhinged, listen, you fucks, <laughs> oh, I should have got my shirt, you guys, I got my shirt, it was so funny, did I, I, because I showed you guys my shirt, right, my listen, you fuck shirt, I got it, uh, the physical copy of it, it's, it's amazing, it's so amazing, I love it so much, um, Watch House of Cards. Oh, yeah, we have to finish this clip. I have to at least finish it. I put it on one and a half. Have a second chance. And no one is laughing now. This is the time to stop him by voting him out once and for all. We don't want to wake up after the election saying, what, again? My God, what the hell have we done? We can't have that happen again. Today was Memorial Day. It's a good time to reflect on how Americans fought and died so that we may enjoy the freedoms guaranteed to us by a democratic government. A government that, as President Lincoln said, of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Under Trump, this kind of government will perish from the earth. I don't mean to scare you. No, no, wait, maybe I do mean to scare you. If Trump returns to the White House, you can kiss these freedoms goodbye that we all take for granted. I think I got a bug bite on my forehead. Forget about it. That's over. That's done. If he gets in, I can tell you right now, he will never leave. He will never leave. That's true. You know that. He won't. He will never leave. What does that mean? Is that the country we want to live in? Do we want him running this country and saying, I'm not leaving, I'm dictator for life? I hope this new ad campaign, campaign reaches outside the bubble to remind supporters of what a danger he is to our lives. This is not a threat. This is a reality. And that's why I've joined the Biden-Harris campaign, because the only way to preserve our freedoms and hold on to our humanity is to vote Thank for you, Joe Biden. Buddha. Really, we don't have a choice. On January 6th, while Republican lawmakers despicably tried to keep the loser Trump, the loser Trump, in the White House, and Trump-inspired insurrectionists stormed the Capitol. Yeah, you're right, men Muhammad. And women from law enforcement put their lives on the line to defend this country. Our democracy. They are the true heroes. These guys are the true heroes. They stood and put their lives on the line. For these low lives, for Trump, they lied under oath. Who lied under oath? What are you, what are you telling me? Excuse me? They lied under oath? 
What do you say? They're, tra they're traitors. You gotta, I don't know. I don't even know how to deal with you, my friend. I don't even know how to deal with you. They stood there. They didn't have to. And there were other ones in there who probably were in with them a little bit too, and they found a way to get around. Not these guys. They stood there and fought for us, for you, for you. Okay. Well, you know, they, Can you send me his name? They are the two heroes. I'm honored to be with these two heroes today from former Capitol Police Officer Harry Dunn and former Metropolitan Police Officer Michael Fanon. Are you talking to me? Yes, it is, Amir. <laughs> I came here today to remind Americans of what Donald Trump is capable of and the violence that he unleashed on all Americans. Okay, I guess that was the only Robert De Niro part. That's amazing. I do love, it's actually very New York, Abu Obeda. Yeah, actually the honk is a very New York, the car just like going off. Like that happens all the time. Sometimes I'll make videos and you can hear the honking in the back of my apartment. Like, I don't know if you guys can hear right now, but there's an ice cream truck you can hear outside of my apartment. My dogs are being so bad. I wish I could uh, interview one of the Hamas militants. That would be fun. That would be cool to do. But I think that most, I don't, I don't think most of them would talk to the press, understandably. There is no peace in New York City, Mohammed. Egg it, egg it. My dog is being really bad and is like, egg it. No. So my dog is being really bad and he keeps jumping and pulling down the dog food bag and then ripping, ripping it open. I do like Crystal Ball. I do like her. She's done a lot. Um, <laughs> um, she's done a lot of really good work on Gaza. Isn't my dog cute? Why are you gray? My little baby. Anyway. Um, okay. So I know. So cute, I know. Okay, so anyway, I gotta wrap this up soon, but I wanted to encourage those who are able to to join my Ko-Fi. Ko-Fi is, um, Ko-Fi is like Patreon, where you can just like choose an amount and become a patron every month. So I will encourage everybody to subscribe to my YouTube and if you're able to subscribe to my Ko-Fi, which I'll put in the link of this live. Crystal and Kyle are mom and dad. True. True. Yeah, you're right, Rod and Ruby. She was like, he's like, uh, that's correct, Mohammed. Um, yeah, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like Patreon, but obviously I want to try to build it up. So if you can join and become a monthly member, that would be really cool. I would appreciate that. To support my work. Oh no. How do I get out of here? So whoops. You guys, look at this. It's getting bigger. The stuff, yes, you can make one-off donations on Ko-Fi. Oh my gosh, look at this bug bite on my head. Um, Yes, it is Ko-Fi. It's spelled like K-O-F-I with a dash. I'm going to put the link in the live. So if you guys want to see it, it's right after, um, it's right after, um, I'll put it in the link right after I end this live. Um, But Yes, it does allow you to do one-off donations, which of course I always appreciate, but I obviously want to try to get like consistent members or people that will stay members every month. Um, get some antihistamines ASAP. Oh my gosh. I thought Ruby at first you wrote, get some anti-Semitic ASAP. <laughs> a mosquito. Anti-Semitism <laughs> creep. Yes. All of, um, all of the bug bites and the spider bites are... <laughs> Uh, would I react to Jon Stewart? Of course. Of course. Yeah, spider bites are Hamas. When my dogs are breaking into stuff, it's also <laughs> Saying free parking is anti-Semitic. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. Also, yeah, follow me on Twitter if you guys want to see the uh, ridiculous things that psychotic Zionists say to me on a daily basis on Twitter. They're so ridiculous and embarrassing. I know, I know. I'm not supposed to be touching it. It's hard not to, though. It's, like, really bothering me. I need to, like, get something on it. Itsy bitsy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, yeah, I can do a reaction video to his one about Israel. I'm not sure which one you're referring to, but I could, I could do one. Um... Yes, 
I should. I should go to the pharmacy and be like, do you guys have any anti-Semitic cream for my forehead? And if they say no, I'm going to accuse them of being Hamas. Where are going? Is that the one that the member of parliament got fired? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure which video of Jon Stewart you're referring to. I know, right, Skibby? It is. It is. I don't even know. I feel like I didn't have it at the beginning of stream. And then it was there. And like, as the stream was going on, it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. He's telling his screen works better. <laughs> True. All right. Well, if you guys want um, on, I know, I know the stuff. I kept scratching it. If you guys want, uh, you should put some um, ideas or things that you want me to cover that we can talk about in the Discord. If you guys haven't joined the Discord yet, you definitely should. And it's it's just us like talking in there. And like if you have any ideas of things that you want covered, you can just put it in the Discord. Apple cider vinegar. Yeah, I should try that. Oh, this is so annoying. Okay, man. Okay. Uh the link to the Discord is in the community area of of um what do you call it? Uh YouTube. Like if you're on my YouTube and you go to like the community part tab, there's a link to the Discord. Oh, thank you, O'Day, for joining the Ko-Fi. Thank you, O'Day. Yay. That's 13 members then. 13 members. Oh, I should put it in the description. No, you guys are right. I'll put it in the description. In my channel description. I'll put it in the channel description. Yeah, I have a lot to catch up on. All right, I got to get going because I got to go and take these little boys on their damn walk. Um, But you know what, though? Real talk, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I need to have a cigarette. I need to have a cigarette. I need to have a cigarette. So for those of you who pray, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray that the link is expired. What? 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 What is happening? <laughs> Why? How? But how? Okay, so how do I share it then? Wait. What? How do you share it? Okay. How do I set it to not expire though? You can set it in settings and make sure that you selected not expire. That's so annoying. Okay, right after I get off of this, I'm gonna try to fix it. I don't know how to fix it. I'm gonna have to look up how to fix it. Like where the day, I don't even know where the damn settings are. Hold on. Oh wait, create channel server settings. But where, but where in server settings do you make it so that it doesn't stop? Does anybody know in edit invite click? Oh, wait, where it says custom invite. Wait, I just saw it. Custom invite. <sighs> Integrations, app directory, enable community, server subscriptions, members, invites. What? But I don't even see invites anywhere else, bro. Wait, I'm going to share my screen with you guys really quick because I want you to see what I'm seeing. All right, do you guys see this? Edit invite link button is a small ass button. Yeah, I don't see it. Amir, it's, um, yes, I could. Um, just let me know what you want me to post. Because I feel like I'm like, if I do exclusive content, what would that even be? Because like, I talk so much and we do content here and I do content on TikTok. I'm like, what would I... What would people even want to see that's exclusive? Where the channels are at the top next to the search bar. Wait. Two little men and a plus sign. Where? Where the channels are at the top near the search bar, there is a little men say edit invite link. Okay, wait. Okay, you said where the channels are. Two little men. How am I? Where? Where? Okay, I see this is the two little men. I see them. The two little men in a plus sign. But where's the plus sign? I don't see the plus sign. No, go to where the channels are. 
This? Are you talking about this plus sign or this plus sign? What? Hit Blakely at the top left. At the top left. Okay. Never. Generate new link. Copy. Did I do it? <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Will it let me post it in chat? Yay. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what's happening what's your what's that noise <laughs> yay thank you guys for helping me i posted the link in the chat did it work thank you old bony bird muhammad everybody you guys all helped me this was a team effort <laughs> okay yeah so with the discord and i will repost an updated link in my youtube profile I feel like that would not only be a great way for you guys to connect with each other because we're building a community here. So this will be a great way for you guys to connect with each other because, again, we're building a pretty cool community here. But also, it um, I think it's also a good way for you guys to tell me what you want to see me talk about. So like, um, so like regarding, I don't know, whatever, like next time I do a live stream, which might be Sunday. I might be able to do it Sunday. If not, I might do it Monday. I think I might do it Monday. Um, Sunday or Monday, but I'll let you guys know. I'll like post in the Discord what day I'm going to do it. But like for whatever, like I feel like the Discord will be good for you guys to like tell me what what stories you want to talk about. Like what's going on in the news, what's happening in Gaza or the world or whatever that you guys want to talk about. I feel like it would make it easier. Oh yeah, do you guys like my profile picture on here? Wait, how do I... Where's edit profile, bro? Blakely, edit. Do you guys like my profile picture? I'm the Hamas bee. All bees are Hamas. <laughs> I'm the Al Qassam bee, the wasp that attacked the IOF soldiers. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I want more stuff with that green, uh, with that green bandana. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I so badly want that green bandana. <laughs> I don't know how to get it. I don't know how to make it, but I really want one. I really want that green bandana. But instead of saying whatever it says, I don't know what it says because I, I don't know how to speak Arabic, but I wanted to say, but do you condemn Hamas? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Amir, to be, be or not to be Hamas. <laughs> You know what I found to be the most hilarious thing about the Piers Morgan thing is when he actually wrote on Twitter that what happened in Rafa was horrible and horrific and inexcusable. Everyone on Twitter who's a Zionist started calling him Hamas. So like he's been spending months and months being like, but do you condemn Hamas? And then all the Zionists are like, turns out Piers Morgan is Hamas. <laughs> all right, everybody. I got to take my dogs out now. I'm glad that you guys joined the Discord. Um, please become a member on Ko-Fi if you're able. Obviously, you know, if you're not able, totally understand. That's cool. I can't join a lot of things that are like paid memberships because I can't afford it. So if you can't, totally understandable. If you can, that would be awesome. Um, I think my Amazon driver is up. <laughs> so join the Ko-Fi if you can. But if you can't, the Discord is free and join the Discord. And uh, yeah, I will let you guys know um, if in the Discord, whether or not it's going to be Sunday or Monday that I'm going to do my next live. All right, everybody. I love you all. Thank you for hanging out with me today as usual. I had fun with you guys. It's always fun. It's always informative. It's always based. <laughs> all right all right so i love you guys and i will see you either sunday or monday but i will let you know thank you rotten ruby i love you all bye free palestine fuck zionists